Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Okay. Uh, we thank God we are we are here this morning. We are going to continue with our. Uh, mm, we are going to continue with our, our presentations. Please, Please, I don't I like don't what like you what did last week. last week. So if it so happens if it today happens too, to I will leave. I will leave. And I'll go and, and tell them that I can't teach can't this class this again. again. So I beg so you, let's beg comport you. ourselves. Okay. So for the groups that they were doing last week and we left, they are not going to have a chance of doing it again. So we are going to the next four groups and nobody sent me nobody sent me the presentations i waited and nobody sent me the presentation so we are we are continuing with our presentation please which group are we which groups are we Sister, please, I think we were at group seven the last time. Okay. So group eight, nine, ten, and eleven. Let's let's start. Group eight, nine, ten, and eleven. I told you that you should be sending me your presentations before we, we, we meet, but this week nobody sent me any presentation. So group eight, nine, ten, and eleven. Please, sister, group 11, we send our presentation to the class rep. We don't know whether she forwarded it to you. Please, sister, also group 12, we did send. Okay, I have group 12. I have group 12. I have I have group 6. I have group 7. 8, 9 and 10. Please where are you? Group 8, 9 and 10. Okay, group 11 and 12, if you are ready, kindly present. So please, group 12, we are ready. Okay. Bra. Let's see this. Mm -hmm. Please, I'm Mavis presenting on behalf of Group Show. Our topic is spinal bifida. Sister, please, can you see my slides? No, please. Yes. Uh, but me, we I can, can see. Uh, we can all see. I can see. I can see. So those who can see, check, check your laptop or your phone. Mm, okay. Yes, it's now clear. Thank you. Okay. 
Please, we can't hear. We can't hear. Please. Can you hear me? Carry on. Hello, can you hear me? Uh -huh. No, please. Can you hear me? Your voice. The microphone is not too clear. Hello. Please, from beginning, what, what if you use a UOP? If you are using a laptop. Mm -hmm. oh, I'm using a laptop. Uh, so I, I um, just connect a earpiece to it so that we hear you. Because using a laptop, it will be difficult for us to hear you. Hello? Yeah, it's now clear. Please it's kindly clear. go back. And, uh, kindly go back and start again, please. Is it clear now? Hello? Is it clear now? It's okay, please. Thank you. I was talking about um, spinal bifida. That is our topic for group 12. Hey. And I'm presenting on behalf of group 12. Is it clear? Can I go on? Go on. Time is going. It's um, not. to defect. That occurs in early fetal development. This is a condition in which the neural axis of the vertebra, muscle, and skin. Hmm. It's not uh, good. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi, sister. Who is Please present here. The Please person who is presenting, we can't hear you. So can somebody take up? Can any member of the group take up? Because we can't hear. Sister, my hand is up. Yes. I'm checking out. Okay. Sister, my okay. hand is up. Yes, um, please, you can, you can continue. Uh -huh, thank you. Please, my name is Yaya Boa, but what I would like her to do for me is that she keeps talking while I do the presentation. But uh, our, our topic is on spinal bifida, group 12. It's a congenital new, neural tube Sister. defect that occurs in early fetal development. This is a condition in which the neural acts of the... The vertebra, muscles, and then skin fail to unite over the spinal cord. As a result, the content of the spinal canal protrudes, forming a tumor. It may occur in any part of the spinal column, but it is commonly seen in the lower part, thus a lumbosacral area. Could you please scroll over? The causes and then risk factors. The causes are unknown, but the following are risk factors. The race, spinal bifida is common among whites and then Hispanics. Sex, girls are affected more often. Family history of neural tube defect, folate deficiency, some medications, diabetes, types of spinal bifida, spinal bifida occulta, spinal bifida with meningo cell, spinal bifida with menin Go myo myolocell, spinal bifida occulta. This is a mild type of spinal bifida. Even though they're left in the vertebral column, the content remains inside and do not protrude. 
by a homeless noticed on first examination. This type does not threaten life. It will be destroyed in life when the final X-ray is done. Um, that is, the, the, if it's scrolling, the, the picture is what you are seeing at the moment. Then we have the spinal bifida with meningocele. This type of spinal bifida, there is a small tumor which protrudes through the cleft. It may be closed or open, consisting of meninges containing cerebrospinal fluid. The clinical manifestations: there is a swelling. The swelling may be soft and covered with a thin, transparent membrane. Hello, hello, what hello. Yes. Please, yes. the the next person, the next person should continue. Okay. Thank you. Sister, please, I'm Mavis. I'm taking over. Mercy, so please mute your mic. Hello? You can yes, continue, can please. Me. Okay, we are talking about the spinal bifida with meningocele. In this type of spinal bifida, there is a small tumor which protrudes through the cleft. It may be closed or open, consisting of meninges containing cerebrospinal fluid. This is a picture with the myelomeningocell. And we have the types of spinal bifida. That is the normal one, the occult, the meningocell, and then the myelomeningocell. The diagnosis. The diagnosis is recognition at birth by the presence of reddish marks in the sacrolumbar region. No movement of the lower legs. There's dripping of urine, which suggests damage to the nerves, which supply the bladder and bowels. Ultrasound can also diagnose. There's also petulous anus. Maternal serum Alpha fetoprotein test can also diagnose spinal bifida. We move to general care. As soon as it is discovered, the baby must be laid on the abdomen or lateral and a sterile gauze soaked in warm saline used to cover it because it, it usually appears at the spine of the back of the baby's back. We can put the baby. Uh, on the supine position. So we need to turn the baby to lie on the lateral side. It is observed for any leak, leakage. Administer medications, that is antibiotics, anticholinergics, and laxatives as prescribed. Involve parents in the care of the baby. General hygiene should be maintained to maintain general hygiene to prevent further infections occurring to the baby. The nursing management will maintain respiration. Baby should be, be tackled to maintain adequate airway. Give oxygen when necessary. Provision of warmth. Provide extra clothing to prevent uh, the baby from uh, becoming hypothermic. And then baby is nursed in a warm pot. Nurse baby in thermoneutral environment. The environment should, shouldn't be too hot, it shouldn't be too cold, it should be thermoneutral. Then infection mm -hmm. prevention, there should be minimal handling of the baby. Protect the sac, cover with sterile, moist, normal cellar. No adherent dressing and change every two hours. Nutrition. We should encourage the mothers to breastfeed the baby. And if they can, the baby cannot breastfeed, they can express and feed the baby. Adequate fluids and electrolytes should be given. Baby should be fed with express breast milk if the baby cannot suck. House or house. Observation. We take the vital sign for our measure case circumstance daily for detection of hydrocephalus. Assess and monitor the sac for redness, clear coolant drainage, abrasions, 
irritation and signs of infection. Then you assess the hip for deformity. Treatment. Baby is referred to the next level as soon as possible for further evaluation and care. Surgery may be performed within hours of birth. Genetic counseling. In some cases where severe defect is detected in early gestation, therapeutic abortion may be considered. Complications of spinal bifida. We have loss of bowel or bladder control. Hydrocephaly. Permanent weakness or paralysis of the legs. Frequent urinary tract infection. Difficult delivery with problems resulting from a traumatic birth, including cerebral spasticity and decreased oxygen to the brain. Our reference Fraser, Dana M. Cooper, Margaret A. North, Anna G. W. Mass Dentist for Midwife, African Edition. Thank you, sister. Uh, okay, do we have questions for them? This one there is reading, they read. It's not discussion, it is reading. Do we have any questions for them? Do we have any questions for them? No, sister. Okay. If we don't have any questions for them, then let me to, let me do my, my roll call. Me yes. me, it, it was just reading that I I heard you people reading, so I couldn't follow you. So, so Mister, please see. want to know you can ask us. We will clarify. Stop, please. I... If there's anything, please, you want to... somebody has a question. Yes, let's hear you. It's a picture. I'm part of the group. I'm Elizabeth. Okay. Mm -hmm. I have a picture to show. You please, the one showing her. Show. Yes, please. Ah, okay, so let's see the pictures. Let me share my picture. Then your your group, they have to go off. Then you yeah. can share your screen. Please, um, this is just a summary of what we are talking about. The types of spinal bifida. We have spinal bifida or quarter, spinal bifida with meningo cell, and then spinal bifida with milo meningo cell. So the first one we, we said is just uh, the occulta. You see a dimple at the back of the baby's uh, uh, at the lamb lambotocal area. So you might see some hairlike projections on it. That is a spinal bifida or quarter. And then the spinal bifida meningo cell, you there might be um a tumor, a protruding tumor. That is the second picture I'm talking about with fluid, cerebrospinal fluid. And then Milo, the one with Milo Meningo, so spinal nerves are part. Thank you, sister. Okay. So, so looking at this, oh, you've gone. Okay, I'm coming. So with the, when we say something is occult, it means it's hidden. Please, can you see the cursor? 
Basic. When we say when we say occult, it 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 means it's hidden. So when you look at the first picture, the 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 there is you 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 will see something like this. Sometimes you see a, a small swelling at the back, or sometimes you will not see it. You will not see it at all. It's only that you 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 can see. Some dent. Sometimes it is That's a dent. The, the lumbosacral region, there is a dent there. Then sometimes you can also see hairs around the the tumor. Hairs around the tumor. Then just as they said with the meningo cell, it is tumor with some fluids in it. Tumor with some fluids in it. But with the meningo, uh, meningo myosal, you see that there is fluid and there are some uh, uh, nerves that have gone there to resolve. These are the three types that we have. Okay. Thank you very much. If there are no, if there are no other questions, uh, uh, let me see by hand. Dokas Atuku. Dokas. Dokas, let me see your hand. Oh, it's okay. It's how much. But it's that you are giving me. But what? I don't want to wear my sandals. Ah, it's just. Yes, you know, 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 you you know, Okay. Elizabeth M. Imoro. Elizabeth, are you in class? India, you cry. Oh. oh, but then you have to come to class to be selling guys, meet yourself, meet yourself. You have to starting the class too. Ah. Oh, please mute her. Oh. Hello, Monique. Okay, so it's it's the class. You've done well. Let's hear the next group. Thank you. <laughs> the next group. Group eight, if you are ready, if you are not ready, group nine. Group ten and eleven. Sister, good morning. Good morning. Please, I'm Christian Osu Barton, presenting on behalf of Group 11. Our topic is encephaly and hydrocephalus. Encephaly. Encephaly is a severe rare birth defect that affects the development of the brain and skull during pregnancy. It occurs when the neural tube, which is a structure that forms early in fetal development and eventually develops into a brain and spinal cord, fails to close properly. As a result, the majority of the brain that does not form and the bones of the cow may be incomplete. Oh, oh. 
causes of encephaly. While the exact cause of encephaly is not fully understood, it is believed to be a combination of genetic and environmental factors. Here are some, here are some potential causes. One, genetic factors. These genetic variation may affect the development of the neural tube, which forms the baby's brain and spinal cord during early pregnancy. Two, folic acid deficiency. Insufficient folic acid intake has been linked to an increased risk of neural tube defects, including encephaly. And then number three is environmental factors. These factors can include certain medications, chemicals, toxins, and infections. For example, the use of certain anti antiseizures medication or exposure to high level of radiation or certain chemicals has been associated with the high risk of encephaly. Then number four, maternal health conditions. Some maternal health conditions such as uncontrolled diabetes, obesity, or pre-existing high blood pressure may contribute to the clinic, uh, development of encephaly in the fetus. And then we move on to the clinical manifestation of encephaly. Here are the clinical manifestations commonly associated with encephaly. One is absent or un underdeveloped brain. The number two, absence of the skull. Number three is uh, facial abnormalities. And then four, scalp abnormalities. Number five, neurological defects. And it explains since the brain is sufficient, uh, significantly affected, including the inability to see, hear, or respond to stimuli. They are usually unconscious and do not display normal reflexes. And then number six, other associated abnormalities, such as heart defects, spinal cord malformations. And then we move on to diagnosis of encephaly. Diagnosing encephaly typically involves a combination of prenatal screening and diagnostic tests. Number one being prenatal screening. These screening tests can include blood tests and ultrasound examinations, elevated levels of alpha fetoprotein. That is AFP in the mother's blood may indicate a higher risk of neural tube defects. Number two, uh, diagnostic test. These tests can include ultrasound and then uh, aminosynthesis. This is a procedure in which a small amount of the amniotic fluid is extracted from the uterus using a thin needle. And then we move on to the nursing management of encephaly. One being prenatal counseling. Two, emotional support of the family. And then three, education and decision making. Four, coordination of care. Number five being comfortable care. That is baby is kept comfortable and free from pain and gently handling the baby. And then number six is bereavement support and seven feeding and nutrition. Number eight is uh, skin care, keep, that is skin care. So you have to keep the skin clean and dry. And then we move on to the prevention of encephaly. So uh, one number one being folic acid supplementation, then two prenatal care, number three. Hello. 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 Number three. <laughs> Yeah, and for genetic counseling. 
Oh, my God. Healthy lifestyle. Sister, please, are you carrying it? Sit my baby. Not hello, sister. Poor baby, Joe. Thomas, I'm going to soon. I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, Please, I'm continuing. Complications of encephaly. Number one is absence of brain function. And then two, respiratory difficulties. Three, feeding difficulties. Four, seizures. Five, increased susceptibility to infections. So please, we move on to hydrocephaly. So hydrocephaly, also known as hydrocephalus, is a medical condition characterized by an abnormal accumulation of cerebrospinal fluid, that is CSF, within can, can the... somebody continue? Can a group member continue? Yes, please. So our next topic is hydrocephaly. And hydrocephaly, also known as hydrocephalus, is a medical condition characterized by an abnormal accumulation of cerebrospinal fluid, that is CSF, within the cavities of the brain, called ventricles. CSF is a clear fluid that surrounds and cushions the brain and spinal cord. In a healthy individual, CSF is continuously produced and absorbed, maintaining a balanced and normal pressure within the brain. However, in hydrocephaly, there is an imbalance between the production and absorb absorption of CSF, leading to, to an increased volume of fluid within the ventricles. This can result from the various causes, including obstruction of CSF flow, impaired absorption, or overproduction of CSF. So types of hydrocephaly according to causes. One, congenital hydrocephalus. This type of hydrocephalus occur, occurs when there is an abnormality in the development of the brain and in and the nervous system or tumor during fetal growth. Two, acquired hydrocephalus. This type of hydrocephalus occurs due to an injury or illness that affects the brain. It can be caused by tumors, infections, bleeding in the brain, head injury, or other medical conditions. Three, normal pressure hydrocephalus. That is NPH. This type of hydrocephalus occurs in older adults and is often associated with conditions. Hello, hello. Oh, hi. Hello. Hi. Uh huh. Please, uh, the one who is uh, who is uh, uh, presenting should continue. I was trying to mute the one who was talking. Rather, I've muted. Uh, so please, can you unmute yourself and continue? Okay, ma. So. Four, oh, still under the causes of hydrocephalus according to types of hydrocephalus according to types. So the four, communicating hydrocephalus. This occurs when the flow of cerebrospinal fluid is blocked after it exits the ventricles, leading to a build up of fluid. Five, 
non-communicating hydrocephalus. This occurs when the flow of when the flow of cerebrospinal fluid is blocked within the ventricles, leading to a build up of fluid. So moving to the clinical manifestations of hydrocephaly. The clinical manifestations of hydrocephaly can vary depending on the age of the affected individual and the underlying, underlying causes. Here are some common manifestations. One, infants. So under the infants, we have a large head size, bulging frontals and wide sutures. Rapid head growth, irritability and poor feeding, developmental delays, the eyes are small and turn inwards and cannot gaze upwards, which is described as SUN, SUN. Two, older children and adults, so headache nausea and vomiting increased pressure on the brain can cause nausea and vomiting particularly in the morning vision problems difficulty with balance and coordination cognitive and memory problems so diagnosis of hydrocephaly so medical one medical history physical examination Three, ultrasound scan. Four, imaging studies. The most common imaging technique used to diagnose hydrocephaly is magnetic resonance imaging. That is MRI. So nursing management of hydrocephaly. One, assessment. So under the assessment, we have monitor vital signs, assess neurologic, status regularly, including level of consciousness, pupil size, and reactivity, motor function, and reflexes. Document the head circumference in infants to monitor for abnormal growth. Observe for signs and symptoms of increased intracranial pressure, such as headache, vomiting, irritability, and changes in behavior. Two, intervention. So the nursing intervention in collaborates with the healthcare team to implement the prescribed treatment plan, which may include surgical interventions like ventro ventroclopperitoneal, that's VP shunt placement, or endoscopic third ventriculostomy, ETV. Administer medications as ordered such as diuretics to reduce S CSF production or acetazolamide to decrease intracranial pressure. Ensure the proper functioning of VP shunts, including monitoring for signs of shunt malfunction. Example, headache, vomiting, changes in consciousness, and assessing for signs of infection. That is fever, redness, tenderness along the shunt tract. Provide comfort measure to alleviate symptoms such as elevating the head of the bed, providing a quiet environment, and administering pain medication as needed. Three, education and support. Educate the patient and their family about the nature of hydrocephalus. Teach caregivers how to care for the child. Provide emotional support to the patient and their family. Prevention of hydrocephaly. So under the prevention, we have one, prenatal care. Two, genetic counseling. Three, early treatment of certain infections during pregnancy, such as rubella, German measles, tosoplasmosis, and cytomegalovirus, CMV, CMV, have been linked to an increased risk of hydrocephaly in the fetus. Four, folic acid supplementation. Adequate intake of folic acid before and during early pregnancy. Five, avoidance of maternal substances abuse. 
Six, prevention of head injuries. So we now move on to the complications. One, cognitive and developmental issues. Two, motor problems. Increased pressure on the brain can affect motor skills, resulting in muscle stiffness, spasticity, poor coordination, and difficulties with balance and walking. Three, vision problems. Four, seizures. Five, urinary and bowel dysfunction. Hydrocephalus can affect the nerves that control bladder and bowel function. Seven, emotional and behavioral challenges. Eight, shunt related complications in most cases. Hydrocephalus is managed by surgically inserting a shunt to drain CSF. However, shunts can be prone to complications such as infection, blockage, or <laughs> malfunction, which may require further treatment, further surgery, or medical. Thank you. <laughs> Please, we are done. Group 11, thank you. Please, do we have any questions for them? Any questions for them? Yes, uh, please, don't, don't, don't go. Don't remove your slide. Yes, any question? Yes. Yes, ma'am. My question is about the communicating and then the non-communicating hydrocephalus. I didn't get the difference that much. So, uh, so let's let's I'm Rebecca. I'm going to explain what she just asked. With the communication and hydrocephalus, we said it okay when the flow of the cerebral spinal fluid is blocked. After it exists, the... please, are you listening? Yes, please, I'm listening. Okay, so we are saying that with the communication, there is blockage the fluid, when it exists, when it escapes to the ventricle, and it is blocked. So with that, it is within the ventricle. Then with the now communication, it is blocked within the ventricle. Then with the now communication, it will just be, it will escape from the ventricles and now block. All right, thank you. Into my panel, I have been see. Today, today I won't talk. I won't talk. Please, any other question? Any other question, please? Please let's go to your your um um the the anakefali. Uh huh. I uh, it's okay. It's okay. I told you that we are dealing with new needs, and so everything that we talk about should be the new needs. Now let's go to uh, is it uh, diagnosis or? Please scroll down and let me see. No, down. Uh huh. Uh, okay, go to the nursing management. The nursing management, you are saying that prenatal counseling. So, what, what, what is the prenatal counseling? We are dealing with a baby, we are managing a baby. Who is having anakephaly? So if a baby is having an anakephaly and we are managing this baby, what has it got to do with the parent counseling? 
if you have if you have broken the management into bits like uh maybe uh, temperature temperature uh, maintenance of temperature respiration nutrition then maybe you come to uh, guidance and counseling then you can counsel the mother but you cannot uh, counsel a baby who is having an anecdotal you can give emotional support to the family if you are talking about something else. But with the nursing management, your your uh, 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 coordination of care, what is it? Comfort care. So this one will be your management. Baby is kept comfortably and yes, bereavement support. Are you who, who is is the baby who is having uh, an anecdotal or uh, is he is the baby? The one that you are going to give the bereavement support or what? Then feeding and nutrition is part of the management. Skin care is also part of the management. The rest are not part of nursing management of an family. So I've been, I, I keep on telling you that this is neonatal nursing that we are doing. So everything is solely centered on the neonate. Everything is solely centered on the unit. So, group, which group is this? Group eleven. Group eleven. I am not okay. taking. I am not taking your your uh, your presentation. Do do the nursing management work and resend it to me. You are not going to present again but do it well and send it to me and send it to your group please do you do you understand what i'm saying yes, uh -huh. yes, we are doing yes, nest, nest management of a baby with anacephaly so you you can start with uh, maybe temperature uh, uh, maintenance of temperature respiration this baby in your in your uh, in in your Right up. You you said this, this baby. So please go go to whatever that you have. Then you 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 manage. So you can do you can do respiration. You can do temperature. You can do nutrition. Observation is there. The feeding and nutrition. When you say feeding and nutrition, what do you do at the feeding and nutrition? The skincare, what you do at the skincare. The rest is not part of the uh, of the uh, 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 management. So let's go to your hydrocephalus. Let's go to hydrocephalus. So you know, uh, let's go to the signs and symptoms. The clinical manifestation. No, down, 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 please. Down. Uh -huh. You said you said the baby has sun. The, you know, uh, 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 hydrocephalus baby, they have small eyes, as you've said, and it turn inwards because it turn inwards, and the baby's head is very big. They cannot look upwards. And it is described as sunset eyes. Sunset eyes. It is not only sun, but it is sunset eyes. Sunset eyes. So I think uh, uh, that is all. That is all. Thank you, group 11. But you have to do the your management again. Send it to me and send it to the class. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So now we have group nine. Group nine and ten. Thank you, sister. Can you hear me? Yes. I can hear you. Go on. I can hear you. A high risk unit refers to a new a newborn baby who has a greater likelihood of experiencing health complications or developmental issues due to factors such as low birth weight, prematurity, congenital abnormalities, maternal health problems, or other factors that has increased the baby's vulnerability. 
These infants may require specialized me medical care or monitoring to ensure their well-being. Definition of muscle injuries in high risk. No. Your network is very really bad. Should I go back? No, please continue. We can hear you. Sister, please continue. Muscle injuries in high risk new need refer to damage or trauma to the muscles of newborn baby, newborn infants elevated risks for various health complications. These injuries can result from a variety of causes, including med medical procedures, positioning of developmental condition. High risk often include medical issues such as Unit can manifest in or even more severe conditions like muscle tears or necrosis. Types of muscle injuries. Yes. This results from injuries to the hello, 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 please. Hello. Yes, sister. Your network is very bad. Though. Can anybody in your group take up? Madam, good morning. Hello. Please, who, who is taking up? Matthew Rebecca. Okay. Please. <laughs> types of muscle injury. One, particularly or rear neck or twisted neck. This results from injury to the thermotized muscle during the, when the someone is affecting the screen with with their share uh, with their pictures or something like that. Okay, so I start again. Corticolis or rear neck into brackets, twisted neck. This results from injury to the stomatized muscle during birth when the muscle is torn or its blood supply is impaired. When the muscle <laughs> or or, or, or <laughs> neck spasm, when the muscle of your neck spasm and cause your neck twist to one side is a physical sign rather than a disease. Corticolic is caused by excessive traction or twisting on delivery of the anterior shoulder with cephalic presentation or in bridge or in bridge delivery or cesarean section. <laughs> Hello. Corticolic usually causes pain on one side of the neck. You may feel pain in the middle of the neck and in your shoulder and head. Your neck may be very tender, and if you try to massage the area to provide relief, you also find it difficult to strengthen your neck or turn your head in particular way. Images are below to show what um, I just read about. Please, can you, uh -huh, signs and symptoms of muscle injury. One, usually present one or two weeks after delivery. Two, one to three centimeters painless, hard lump, of blood and fibrous tissue is stored on the affected side. The muscle length is shortened and the neck is twisted on the affected side. Pathophysiology of muscle injury. Please, those affecting the screen, kindly remove it for me to see what I'm reading. Okay. Pathophysiology. Immaturity of muscle tissue. That is, neonates, especially premature babies, have, have underdeveloped muscle tissue. 
the immature muscle fibers are more susceptible, uh, susceptible to injury because they lack the strength and re resilience of mature muscle tissue. And the second one is birth trauma. Sister, please, uh -huh. Trauma during delivery, particularly in cases of difficult or premature birth, can result in muscle injury. This trauma might occur due to the use of forceps, vacuum extraction, or other interventions. I'm continuing. Four, inflammatory processes can also cause the uh, muscle injury. And in under it, you have inflammatory responses in neonates can be heightened due to their immature immune system. Inflammation in the muscle can contribute to injury, especially if it becomes chronic. And the fifth one is medication or medication side effects. Certain medications or intervention commonly used in neonatal care, such as intramuscular injections, can advently cause muscle injuries if not administered correctly. Below are the diagnostic investigations of muscle uh, uh, injury. Clinical assessment, that's the first one, begins with a thorough physical examination to identify signs such as swelling, bruising in the muscle tone. Second one, imaging. Ultrasound scan can be used to visualize muscle injuries, assess the extent of damage, and guide intervention. And the third one, blood test. Elevated levels of, please, can you bring it down? Uh -huh. Elevated levels of muscle enzymes. And, you, uh, and that, those are creatinine, canine, myoglobin in the blood can indicate muscle damage. This one. Magnetic resonance imaging can provide detailed images of muscle injuries and surrounding tissue. The fourth diagnostic test, computed thermography scan. Scans, scans may be used, or CT scans may be used to evaluate muscle injuries in specific cases. We can also do bios, uh, biopsy and in and uh, the biopsy is defined or gives us the definitive information about the extent and type of muscle injury. We have the medical and management of muscle injury. As again. Thorough assessment, uh, thoroughly assess the extent and severity of the muscle injury, including location, size, and associated, uh, associated complications. Stabilization, ensure the unit is stable and address any life threatening issues first. When it comes to pain management, Newness may experience pain, so appropriate, so appropriate pain relief measures should be administered, taking into account that, uh, taking into account their age and weight. Immobilization of the affected limb or muscle group. Both healing and prevent further injury. Type of injury. Physical therapy may be initiated to maintain range of motion and promote recovery. And the fifth one, we ensure nutrition to support healing and uh, and muscle recovery, including appropriate caloric and protein intake. Seventh management, infection control. Monitor for 
signs of infection. I can't see the one below, please. The one sharing. Monitor for signs of infection. It's not visible. So let's go to the eighth one. Surgical intervention. Surgical intervention. Please reduce the screen for me. You've covered some of the rest. Please, they are sharing. Do me a favor to reduce the screen for me. Please, I can still see all the rest. Please, let me take over. I have it on my phone here. Okay. I'm patients. Surgical intervention. In severe cases, surgical repair or debridement may be required, and this should be done by a skilled pediatrician surgeon. 10, parental support. Provide emotional support and education to the parents as they may be anxious about their neonate condition. 11, developmental care. In incorporate developmental care principles such as minimizing stress and providing a developmental appropriate environment into the unit care plan. Prevention of muscle injuries in the high risk unit. Prevention of muscle injuries in the high risk unit. One, position. Proper position of the baby is crucial. <laughs> Ensure that the baby limbs are well supported to prevent muscle strain or contractures. Physical therapies may be involved to help with this. Two, arrange two range of motion exercise. Gentle range of motion exercises can help maintain muscle flexibility. These exercises could be done by a healthcare professional who is experienced in neonatal care. Three, monitoring. Regular moni monitor, regularly monitor the baby's muscle stone and develop development to detect any issue early. High risk neonates may require more frequent assessment. Four, nutrition. Adequate nutrition is essential for muscle development. Ensure the baby receives proper nutrients, including protein, to support muscle growth. Five, physiotherapy. In, in some cases, physical therapy may be recommended to address muscles, muscle issues or provide guidance on exercise that can help prevent the prevent injury. Eight, avoid overuse. Avoiding overuse. Limit excessive handling or movement of the baby or overuse can lead to muscle strain. Seven, avoid excessive pressure. Be mindful of pressure points, especially if the baby is on ventilator or in an incubator to prevent pressure shocks or muscle compress compression. Eight, skin care. Proper skin care is essential to prevent breakdown and injury to the underlying muscles. Maintain clean and dry skin to prevent skin-related complications. Thank you. Thank you. Please, do we have any questions for them? Olivia, we will say we'll grab box to see if you have a
please do we have any questions for them do we have any questions for them okay let's go to your types types please scroll the uh, scroll the your screen let's go to types types Uh, you said uh, you wrote types of muscle injury, but you gave us only one, torticollis or weary neck. Do you have other types or it is only this one that we have? We have only, the only one we have. And then you shouldn't have written types of muscle injury. If you write types of muscle injury, then it means it is not one, it is many. So yes, the types. Oh, okay, okay. And then let's let's get to your prevention. Uh, yes, let's go to the prevention. Uh huh. When when you were talking about the the causes of torticollis, uh, you said uh, the 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 uh, your definition. You said that it is trauma to the muscle of newborn infants who are at elevated risk of various health. The injuries result of uh, medical procedures, positioning or. Don't you think, don't you think uh, 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 delivery can also cause torticollis? Hello? Don't you think that delivery can also cause torticollis? Uh, yes, madam. So how would, how would delivery cause torticollis? Please, please, madam, please, madam. During second stage, during second uh, stage, when the head is not no, well, no. like uh, twisted, and you want to pull it by force to bring it out, you can uh, the the uh, pressure exerted at the anterior shoulder side may cause oh some uh, damage of uh, nerves and others there, so it can lead to. Yes. So, so your 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 presentation. You didn't give us causes of torticollis. Okay, what other cause through labor or delivery can bring about a, a torticollis? That's like she said, sister. Overstretching, improper um, pulling of the the neck, the delivery of the anterior shoulder, because you are no longer. Okay. Yes, I, I accept that one. Which other way? Which other way? Sister, I think during a brief presentation. Yes, during rich rich presentation, when you are doing your maneuvering, if you don't do it well, you when the head is uh, when the legs are out and the head is there, if you don't do it. It's well, you can you can also cause torticollis. Tot so I was expecting to see. Oh uh, yes, yeah, somebody is saying shoulder dystocia can also cause uh, torticollis. And so with the prevention, I was expecting you. With the prevention, I was expecting you to talk about all these things i was expecting you somebody is also saying instrumental delivery instrumental delivery so i i had i, I wanted to see causes of torticollis then okay. prevention how, how oh you will prevent it so uh group uh, this is group nine eh? i think you two you have to do something to your your slides Okay, sister. Okay. Okay. Sister. 
conciliation okay. going on is so if the person has not contributed, do you know whether mm -hmm. the person will contribute or not? So if the person has not contributed, do you know whether the person will contribute or not? I'm a little mute your mic. I'm a little. I'm a little mute your mic. I'm a little. Yeah, okay. okay, so uh, group nine, you should also talk about causes. If you have the causes, you can prevent it. So please talk about uh, uh, causes. Then you talk about how you will prevent it. So you should also okay. do something to your slide. Uh, Okay. So okay. And let's let's listen so, to the and let's, last let's listen group. to the and last group. we we end the day's activity. Good morning, sisters. Please, this is group 10. And we are presenting on um Down syndrome. And I want to Hello. Down syndrome is a congenital condition which is characterized by a distinctive pattern of physical characteristics, which includes flattened skull, pronounced folds of skin in the inner corners of the eyes, large tongue and short stature, and some degree of limitations, intellectual disability, sorry, intellectual ability and practice skill. Please, that is the definition of the Down syndrome. So with the next one, please, the next one. We go to the causes. So it is caused, the causes, okay. It is caused when an abnormal cell division results in an extra full or a partial copy of chromosome 21. These genetic maternal causes, mm. uh -huh. this, genetic, this genetic maternal causes yeah, the Down's, developmental changes and physical features yeah. of Down syndrome. This means that they have a total number of 47 chromosomes instead of 46. Uh -huh. This can affect how their brain and body develop. So there is an extra one chromosome. Instead of 46, they have 47 Hello, please, chromosomes. Who is presenting? Please. Please. My name is Victoria. 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 Okay. Yes, madam. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so with the risk factors, we have the family history, and then we have the mother's age of 35 or older. So any woman that is above the age of 35, that is of the age of 35 or above it, have a high risk of giving birth to a Down syndrome baby. And then if the family also have a history of Down syndrome, the probability of the other generations giving birth to some Down syndrome is very high. So please, we go to the clinical features of Down syndrome. The first one is flattened face, especially the bridge of the nose. Please, the second one is almond-shaped eyes that slants up. So the eyes look up. It's not the Mishami baby type, but this one, it looks up. The third one is the child has small neck and then small ears. The tongue, the tongue that tends to stick out of the mouth. So it's 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 not going to be intentional. Hello, Victoria. Like Hello, yes, madam. Vic. Are you walking? Yes, madam. Yes. Are you walking? I am. I am, madam. Oh, then you can't. Please. You can't uh, present. Let uh, somebody. I have read where I'm going. Hmm. Okay, madam, I've sat down. I've reached where I'm going. Sorry. So, um, the tongue that tends to stick out of the mouth. The child has small hands and small feet. The child has small head with flat occiput. The hands are short with single transverse palmar crease. So the lines that are in our hands, some has three, some has four. This child with the Down syndrome has only one and is short. And then a decrease of poor muzzle tone. 
So please, these are the clinical features. Whenever you see these features on the baby, the probability of the baby having a high a Down syndrome is very high. So these are the images we have. These are the almond eyes, the slanted, the slanted eyes, and then with a the single palmar crease, that's what you are talking about. The ears being flattened and then the tongue sticking out. Please, these are the pictures that we have. That's the clinical pictures. Please, the next one. Then we have the complications. So with the complications, we have hearing loss, poor vision, cataract, leukemia, sleep apnea, chronic constipation, we have dementia, we have hypothyroidism, obesity, large tooth growth, Alzheimer's disease in late life, respiratory infection, and then the urinary tract infections. So please, these are the complications this baby have. That's whether uh, in their neonate life or later in life. Uh -huh. Please, the next one. So we have the management of Down syndrome. With the management, there, there is no uh, medical treatment for intellectual disability, which is associated with the Down syndrome, but improved medical care has greatly enhanced the life and has increased life expectancy. So thank God for technology. For now, if you have a Down syndrome, baby, the baby can live longer, expected to when there was limited medications or technology. So the American Pediatrics has improved, issued guidelines for the care of children with Down syndrome. The element of medical care includes one, genetic counseling, so the moment the woman takes pregnancy or becomes pregnant, we start with the genetic counseling, especially when the woman has a history of a Down syndrome in her family. Uh -huh. So we do this genetic counseling for her. Two, standard immunization and well child care. So during pregnancy or during the antenatal, they will show you the standard immunization. When the baby comes out, we give this immunization to manage uh -huh, to manage the Down syndrome child or the Down syndrome baby. Three, management of specific manifestation of Down syndrome and associated conditions. So example, endocrine infection, cardiac, respiratory, neurologic, psychiatric, dermatological, and dental disorder. Please, let me pick it one by one. Uh, with the endocrine... Please, anyone from the group to help me. Sorry. Endocrine, with the infections, before, because the immune system is compromised. Uh -huh, that's why the baby is prone to infection. So when the baby faces any infections or have any infections, you can treat that infections like separately. Uh-huh. And then cardiac, respiratory, okay. So with the respiratory, because the bridge of the nose is flat, the baby is prone to having respiratory problems uh -huh, or diseases. Neurologic. Even with the chromosome, the chromosomes are even extra. So there, are, there will be some neurological issues with the baby. That's the nerves or the brain. Uh, associated brain or nerves associated diseases. That one too, if the baby, if we see that the baby have it, they can treat it. And then psychiatric. So the baby will undergo a psychiatric, maybe a psychiatric therapy, which will help both the mother and then the baby. Dermatological. Initially when I was reading, I said it comes in food. So we will take care of the baby's skin. Baby is prone to skin conditions because of how the body or the skin is folded. So with that one too, they can take care of it. And then dental disorder. So with this one, I think the tongue sticking out and then with the previous one, with the previous slice too, the teeth grows bigger, which is a dental problem. So the mother of the child can go and see a dentist for that particular problem. So the baby, itself the neonate sorry the neonate itself the neonate itself is 
has a yeah. problem because Down syndrome is not a normal baby. So whenever a mother is presented with any of these problems, she will know what to do. That is the, the dental, the psychiatric, the endocrine, the infections, and the other ones. Please, special consideration in adolescents are as follows. One, ongoing monitoring measures, including annual acrylic, acrologic and ophthalmology evaluation. So as the baby grows up and then reaches adolescent stage, the baby can undergo this uh, therapy. That is the ophthalmology. Or oh, hypothyroidism. Oh, Debbie. Please go back. Please go back. The ophthalmology and then the other one. Mm -hmm. And then we continue. So the oh, the way. Uh -huh. Yes, please continue. Sorry. So Alzheimer's disease, adult with Down syndrome, has earlier onset of the symptoms. When diagnosed, it's considered thyroid disease and possible depression. When diagnosed, it's considered thyroid disease and possible depression. And possible depression should be excluded. Eye disorders. An eye exam should be performed on the newborn period or at least before six months of age to detect strap, strap, strapsmos, nastagmos, and cataract. So... With the eye disorders, we do this for the child. That's for the management. With the thyroid fun function, the baby sh it should be done in newborn period and should be repeated at six and at 12 months and then annually. So with the thyroid function, the management is that it should be done in the newborn. So after the baby is born, we do the thyroid function and then it should be repeated again at six months. Six months and we repeat, we repeat the same thyroid function, uh, the thyroid test, and then at 12 months to repeat the same thyroid test. And then every year you send the child to repeat the test. So we have celiac disease. Screening should be done at two years. You repeat the screening if signs and symptoms develop. Growth measurements should be done in the appropriate growth chart for children with Down syndrome. This will help in prevention of obesity and early diagnosis of celiac disease and hypothyroidism. Please continue. Please continue. So please, these are the management of a Down syndrome. Please, don't share the screen. Please continue. For cardiac disease, all newborns should be evaluated by the cardiac by cardiac no. echo for CHD in consultation with pediatric cardiologists. With the hearing screening is to be done in the newborn period, every six months until three years of age and then annually. So please, with the hearing, is done when the baby is born. Every it's done when the baby is born. And then after six months of birth, and then every three years, and then every year, you go for the hearing screening. Hemato hematology. CBC with different with differential to evaluate for polykythemia as well as white blood. WC. WBC. As please, hematology. CBC with differential. Asked to evaluate for polykythemia as well. well as WBC for our presentation. Okay. Okay, thank you. Please, do we have any questions for them? Do we have any questions for them? I saw two people's hands raised up.
Hello, Hello Sister. Sister. Good morning. Yes, Sister, good, good morning. morning. Good yes, morning. please. I'm not asking a question about the presentation, but I think the Down syndrome and tennis syndrome presentation were given to group 15. Yeah, so how come this group have presented? That is what baffles my mind. So I wanted to ask, because I think group 15, we also prepared the same presentation as Down syndrome and tennis syndrome. So I'm surprised. And which group is this? I think this and is group, group 10. Group 10. Please, this so, group 10. So group 10, how come you've also done, so you did Down syndrome? Yes, please. We did only that. Then uh, group 15, don't worry. When it comes to your turn, you do tennis syndrome. Okay, sister. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, please, any, any other question? Osla, Chinebua, your hand is up. Obi, yeah. my boyfriend. <laughs> why, why? Obi, Any other questions or contribution? Yes, yes Bridget. Yes, sister. Thank you. Please, sister, thank you. This is Bridget speaking. Please, I wanted to plead with you if Group Eight could present. Hello, sister. Uh -huh. Yes. Please, I was pleading with you if group eight could be given the chance to present now. Group eight, you are not, you are part of last week. I said those who were to present last week and you people misbehaved. So you couldn't present your... Your, your your slot is passed. You can't present again. So we take it as presented. So um, let's let's let us let us go on. Uh, uh, group ten. This is group ten. Eh? Um, in in fact, I don't know why all your presentations. This the presentation that you've you've given us today. Eh? It, it, it even you've done well, but when the baby is born with Down syndrome. What do you do to the baby before the baby grows up that you do your cardiac and hear him, hearing and hearing him, hematology and hearing him? The day that the baby is born, what do you do to the baby? That is what I want before that one is the immediate management, before you can come with all this management. So it means that when the baby is born and the baby is having Down syndrome, we don't do anything, we don't manage the baby, we don't do anything to the baby. So the baby gets all that we will do, hearing, screening, cardiac, and all those things. So that is what I want. You do the immediate management or the immediate care. Then you can even do the routine care. So some of these will fall under the routine care. Then you can do uh, in adulthood or when the child is growing up, what you can do for the baby. So group 10, I would I would take your I won't take your 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 slides. Do the proper management when the baby is born, immediate care, what you will do, routinely what you will do. Then maybe, maybe in the adult life, what you will do. As I said, we are doing neonatal nursing. So everything that we do should borders around the neonate. When the baby is born up to 28 days, what are you going to do for this baby? 
when the baby is so as for the complications you can bring the adult life into it that one is accepted but with the management a 28 day old baby a baby between day one and 28 days what are you going to do for this baby so that is what i want you people to do i think it's about it's about uh 12 minutes to uh, uh, uh nine o'clock nobody should send me any message yo. nobody should send me any message okay so I don't know if there, there are any other questions or there are any other uh, 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 um, contributions. Any other questions or contributions? Please, sister, I want to find out whether the gluten, when we do it, we are to submit it to you or we'll still present it again. <laughs> going to present it again you've presented but it's only that i want you to break your management break it into immediate care and routine care okay thank you very uh -huh. much uh -huh. i want you to break it into immediate care when the baby is born the first day uh, what you will you do then routinely what you will you do then uh, after that, if you can say that in later life, this can be done, this can be done, fine. But you didn't, you didn't bring any, uh, any, any uh, uh, management today. Okay. So I think it's time. We cannot, we cannot do anything again. It's almost time. So. We'll call it a day. Then, if God permits, next week we would meet. So, God be with everybody. Enjoy your weekend. Stay blessed. So, we meet again. It's bye bye from me. The same to you. Bye bye, sister. Bye bye, sister. Bye bye. Sister. Bye -bye. Bye, sister. Bye-bye. Hey,